here am I standing on the holy hill that's the peak of Arunachala all this time not going anywhere spending more time here that's the town of Trunamale this is where I came from side track goes up this is a very isolated place no one to disturb here greetings day one much divine love and light to you so I'm sitting on this holy hill Arunachala in Trunamale isolated uh, spot not much above the hill just uh, on the foothill uh, area only that is why you can hear the traffic around there but it's still an isolated space so it's been my, this is my second day here and um, contemplating and reflecting a lot on the self which is termed as atma vichara or atma chintan as it is known now it's very important that you know we do this chintan whenever we are here in such locations or such place because ultimately it is the contemplation on one's own self that will lead you to higher goals. Higher goals, I mean something above the Bhautik life, that is the worldly life. Okay. So that is why I say where uh, the other path ends, uh, there is another path that begins, that is the inward journey. All the paths uh, in the external are important for a seeker till a certain stage they reach. Like for example, there uh, somebody asked, oh, uh, you're talking about uh, all the self and all that and there are so many mystics who talk about it. So, does it mean that the other margas or the other paths are not valid? Like uh, there is so much of uh, karma yoga that is there, selfless service and there is um, so much of bhakti yoga, uh, devotion. Uh, it includes even devotion to the guru or god or self, however you take it but something that is again external and uh, there is Raj Yoga, meditation. there are so many paths, there are so many ways, uh, is that all non-existent? No, absolutely not, everything is existent but we must understand that these have certain stages and of evolution, you know, for uh, because everybody has different karmic structure, everybody has different tastes and tendencies uh, depending on their samskaras or karmas. So it might not be easy for everybody to reflect on one particular path or even something take like something on the highest path. Highest path is something on direct contemplation on the soul and it's completely on non-duality. So Advaita, that might not be easy for everybody. So if it is not easy, there are other paths which has been designed by the divine and they all work. Everything work and works and nothing works ways to see it everything works to a certain extent after which nothing works <laughs> so when nothing works I mean external there is a limitation to all the dvaita the dualities whatever we practices we do in the dual world there is a limitation to that and when the limitation reaches a peak point saturation point then one becomes dazzled again now what so there is a lot of uh, hankering and hovering around a certain space and that is where people feel stuck so it's a common thing phenomena that happens in human beings because everybody is very uh, rigorously pra practicing caught on a certain path or certain religion or a certain activity or a certain method and going on and on and on it gives them good it gives them good progress but after a certain period it everything feels like stuck not able to evolve. That is when the chintan should happen, the contemplation should happen as to what do I need to go beyond. Is there something that I am stuck up in, something that I need to go beyond to transcend? Because that level of evolution in the duality will have a certain peak point. That's the final point. Beyond that there is nothing bigger. So then begins this contemplation. So if somebody has become ripened enough in a certain method, to reach even be it bhakti yoga or be, even be it karma yoga karma yoga again leads you to be selfless it teaches you a lot to humble down the ego and humble down the doership actually 
Bhakti Yoga is again more b- beneficial for humbling down the uh, doership because there you are having a devotion to something external and there you are surrendering to that external. So the doership automatically goes down. Are you seeing that? Karma Yoga also, if it is done properly, that is selfless karma. Nishkam karma, if you, if you get into that activity, Nishkam means selfless. You are looking at some, somebody else that is higher than you, more important, you are giving something more important to something else apart from you, so that selflessness comes, selfishness goes and selflessness comes. So, the focus from the I goes to the something else outside and then you begin serving the humanity or animals or plant kingdom or something, Some you see something more important, larger than you. So, there also there is a reduction of that I-ness, I-ness is that ego. So, if you see all these paths are actually designed to reduce the I-ness. I-ness means the duality. The ego consciousness comes from duality. When I say ego, again I am telling you, it's not about pride or um, arrogance. It's, it's not about that. Those are the outcomes of this ego consciousness. Ego consciousness just means duality. When you have strong duality... You will separate yourself from existence and you will say, I exist separately. This is my existence. This is my identity. A separate identity that I have. The me. The I, me, myself. Everything works then towards that. The whole path also goes in that, I am doing something. For whom? For myself. What does this belong to? It belongs to me. You know, that me comes. Belongingness comes only when there is separate. Like I have this mobile. This mobile is whose? It belongs to me. So I am the owner of this mobile. When I have this kind of a dual feeling, I tend to have samskaras or strengthen my samskaras of ownership. I own this. It is mine. So when that mine, me and mine becomes very strong due to the strong strength of I-ness, I, then there is duality there and then there is a boost in this ego consciousness that this is more supreme. Then the rest. This is the pure, simple, humble definition of ego. So, most of the time, you know, I have seen the paths when we talk about ego, it's like, oh, ego is, uh, is the demon within us and, you know, and then we do tapas to kill the ego. I always ask, how can ego kill the ego? Because when you, when there is a, tapas means doership. There is somebody there to kill somebody. That somebody is the problem. We should realize that. That somebody is the main problem. Now that somebody, the ego consciousness, is trying to hunt and kill the ego consciousness. Means it's a suicide. <laughs> and it will not work. It's a conflicting uh, nature. Because I am trying to kill myself. Every time I am hunting, I am not finding. And ultimately, when I find, I find it is myself. And how can I kill myself? So, there is a conflict. (laughs) So, these things must be uh, thought about in a very reflective and contemplative mode. Not in a very agitative or competitive mode. Or in any any reactive modes, it will get very dangerous. Because then you you get into something else. Because the ego consciousness boosts itself up. So, it helps me whenever I come to this hill, this place called Thiruvannamala, it settles completely down. All the other unwanted things which is there in my life, in my koshas, in my subtle bodies, in my physical body, whatever, everything starts settling down. And once all these dust settles down, then you are able to see that light. Are you getting my point? That is one reason we come to such places. Because these places are very highly vibrant and energetic, they help us in raising the consciousness. How raising the consciousness? By reducing that which makes this consciousness heavy. So the I-ness here, automatically, and this is known to be the hill of ego. (laughs) Destroyer of ego here. This, if you do your research from the Skanda Purana also, if you see, this holy hill of Arunachala, because this is the Agni Tattva. Out of the Panchabhuta Salams, the five different places of the Panchabhutas, the elements, 
the five elements of nature this is the agni tatva the fire element and if you see it just besides this hill is the big huge arnashaleshwara temple where we have the agni lingam again the fire element fire is manipur chakra fire is the element of the ego it destroys everything fire destroys everything all it doesn't leave anything fire is one that is known to destroy every guna every property you put anything into fire it will give you ash and ash has no property it's propertyless so agni is known to destroy the ego that is why this hill is called as the destroyer of ego the more you come here <laughs> more you remain in the space you will see that this ego again i am telling you, ego is not about the outcomes what we are talking the body consciousness will go down the i-ness will go down the separatedness will go down if you see i have been for years i have been talking about non duality and oneness that oneness you can continuously or consistently even talk or think about only when the i-ness goes because that identity has to go that i am separate from the self that is one reason you can see all my videos there is absolutely no differentiation between any paths any religion any gurus any methods any technique everything is one it goes to one it's all non duality there is nothing called internal and external there's all one it merges into one that is advaita advaita is oneness non duality there's no dualism dualism means two two means separate that is separate i am separate so the more we reflect and live in this conscious with the world will 100% give you all the reasons to be stuck in duality because the world will remind you not just remind you it will grind you into powder into that dualistic mode that is why we need to get away from the world and contemplate for some time there are a lot of myths in this path like no i need not leave my home i need not go here no it's absolutely wrong absolutely wrong i can confirm this with you there are isolation times needed for every person be it even a householder there are times when you know, but we do not know the soul craves for it and what if you see very closely the soul actually wants to go and we do an excursion we go for a picnic we go for a trip we go why stressed out i just want to spend some time with myself but we do not know that myself we are going into another dual world but the soul knows about it but the mind doesn't know about it the ego consciousness doesn't know so even if one believes no there is no need for isolation there is no need for going anywhere separate everything can be done at home the same people find excuses to go for a trip outside what they are seeking isolation separation from this dualistic world and it's completely holding on tendencies it will grind you in that so you can see that excursion also is somewhere that form only of isolation but because they are the samskaras are very much caught up in the worldliness even the places they choose is again another worldly place and then they understand that they have gone for a trip and thinking that they will get some peace of mind but they do not know where the, wherever they go they carry the mind body manomaya kosha with them and everything the contents of the mind also goes with them mind is not at peace they do not know who's the mind they do not know who are they they do not know what is their body about they do not know anything they just know that i need to get peace who's that i never ever questioned in life how can you question who's that i when you have not even contemplated on the non dualistic aspect or reach till there till you reach there that is why all the paths are needed because i told you all these paths will reduce the iness the ego but if the attitude and the approach towards going towards this path is not this to reduce that iness very dangerous very 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 you get caught up you're caught up then it's not liberating it will bond you even more that is why many people spend 5 years 10 years sometimes even lifetimes doing certain uh, rituals or paths or following um, a certain god and all that but at a certain time they cannot bear it they cannot understand why and they say the god is merciless it's not happening 
they are not ready to look within or they haven't had this approach right approach to why they are doing a certain path like many people i have done so much sadhana i do so much tapas i i just ask them why are you doing that no answer <laughs> even right now if you are contemplating you will not know why you are doing oh you will say moksha what is moksha if you understand if you contemplate nobody will be able to tell what is that because they don't even know what is that these are all fancy terms like self realization enlightenment and all that okay it seems good because you feel that you know if i am enlightened all my miseries will go away and then i can live in bliss most of the people i'll tell you see how funny this is they have the idea of enlightenment because they want to enjoy life without obstacles <laughs> the idea of enlightenment is that enlightenment or self realization also for that oh it's like you know see once you are self realized you are always in satchidananda you are always in bliss and nothing affects you all these problems don't affect you then i can sit and have my nice dishes then i can roam around see the world i can <laughs> i can buy this property right <laughs> most most are in that this is the right approach towards the path we must be very clear crystal clear what what is all this about so when when do we get this idea when we can settle down and sit with ourselves read vedanta uh, study the scriptures and go into higher scriptures if we do not understand listen to those gyanis or those mahatmas who have mastered it and look into their teachings reflect it on your life this is what i mean by contemplation and in this contemplation you cannot do it in the world you have to get away from the world i have been doing this all my life and it has been immensely beneficial immensely i can't tell you how much i will never deny that this has helped me so much and i suggest everybody should take time out so somebody told me the other day oh no it's not that way we should not uh, go we are not supposed to go anywhere and we are supposed to uh, be always with our uh, self be with our self and uh, practice everything in our own space we are told not to i said follow the ideals that you are following like for example if you are following a master on the siddha marga or any any uh, guru you will look into their life you will find a patch of their life which they have spent in deep contemplation in isolation my master for example if you are telling about householders my master is a householder he spent years in deserts if you call that abandoning family yes not actually uh, dumping any family no you need to give space to them you need to give space to yours if you need to elevate beyond certain things so if it is very true ki you have to sit in between your family only and do spirituality you can contemplate on why my master spent so many years in the wilderness see he got to as so i say let it be practical spirituality it's not about theses and philosophies and it's not you got to be very practical you got to observe the ideals that you are following in their lives how they live most of the answers you will get from the examples that they lead because they have reached that stature that high uh, level of evolution in life because they did certain things in their life and if you observe that you will come to know and then you follow those ideals so it's not a sin to go out any <laughs> and um, it's it's not your dumping your family or anything okay you can come and grab them back <laughs> if you are so concerned actually the idea of um, this why people are scared is because they feel once they go far then that coming back and hugging might not really happen so they are subconscious the soul deeply reveals to them that this is the ultimatum of life that you have to renounce all these things some time or the other if not that is not your mukti you cannot have mukti holding on to things that you love however dear it is to you if we do not learn from this something called death will teach us that there is separation <laughs> there is separation one day it will come you have to separate from 
everything that dearly belongs to you and if you have not learned yet to separate then you hover around for god knows how much time maybe in the pitru lokas all your attention here your attention should have been there to free yourself but you are you are in bondage stuck up with the things that you are already so while you are living there is no mukti after you are dead physically there is no mukti all the time the soul is struggling so finally it has to come back take another body and then that is how yours and mine story is going on so you believe this is only your this is my wife this is my children this is my parents this is my so and so blah 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 it goes even including pets this is my pets all those are attachments only everything you say it belongs see there is a i and there is a belonging this belongs to me and this is me so this is mine when you say this is mine attachment so with duality comes attachment because you believe it is separate and then all the struggles to keep that close to you see if you observe very carefully whole life goes in keeping closely keeping closely means all kind of fears will start ev- uh, uh, erupting in you why because you know you cannot keep it always close to you so whenever a little fire gets kept within it gives you jitters oh what will happen not knowing that one day it has to go so what is the wiseness that is why all the shastras all the great mystics have told it's okay it's okay if you realize that you're attached and all that but slowly begin the process of detachment how do you get into detachment this body consciousness work on the body consciousness don't directly work on the detachment oh detachment i got to get detached you will go into wrong practices many people they uh, leave their family and go for a long time thinking that i'll they'll get detached some they live in the family but they don't talk they isolate they close the rooms i will not talk and all that because i am detached that's not detachment <laughs> in the other room you'll be sitting and always contemplating what what is my mother thinking what is my father thinking what is my husband what is my children thinking there is not de- detachment comes from the mind from within it's not physical the wrong ideas so if you go to work directly on these outcomes of the iness this is the problem rather work on the source the root cause the root cause is your iness this separatedness that is coming so you have to go into atma chintan this path is not for everybody i am telling you because it's not easy it's not easy i am not advocating here that no this is the i am there in all the paths if i have to do karma in the world whatever i am doing i am i become a karma yogi whenever i see something and i love seeing or connecting or i have certain kind of devotion maybe it's my guru's picture or a picture of an ascended master or something that gives me uh, that connection with the divine it's a devotion it's a bhakti i become a bhakti bhakti mar uh, uh, the per- devotee with devotion and the moment i am reading some scriptures contemplating like here contemplating chintan on myself inquiry on myself and all that i become a gyan margi gyan yogi it's all about gyan is about the wisdom or intellect working on the intellect we have a discrimination that requires lot of contemplation and uh, reflection whenever i feel like i'm sitting on this mountain and suddenly i'm going into meditation deep meditation i'm going into i'm falling into meditation i become a raj yogi so everything is there all the marga is there within me but they act on different phases of life but ultimately what will liberate me is none of these because bhakti how long are you going to because bhakti is dual until i have told this many times until that apara bhakti turns into para bhakti it's not going to help apara is you you are the worshipper and there is an idol or god outside of you you worship it you go on worshiping you there is no mukti next if you are too uh, connected to that uh, uh, idol let's say shiva shiva or narayana narayana or ganesha ganesha and if you develop that sanskaras there are equal chances that in your in your next janma you will be born as a priest where you get an opportunity to always uh, worship that's really not mukti mukti is merging into that and becoming non dual oneness you get into that tattva 
you see shiva out you merge into that and realize the shiva tattva what is the shiva tattva nirguna nirakara that is the real i you are going to the source until that non duality happens until that apara bhakti turns into para bhakti there is no mukti this this is gyana marga when you contemplate and you do chintan these are the results that come out it shows you in clarity your viveka is purified when your viveka is purified it gives you crystal clear discrimination of everything it can in sharp dissection you can see everything right wrong right wrong right wrong right wrong it can show you and you then catch the right thing and keep moving so developing the viveka is very important the whole chidakasha gita of bhagwan nityananda is about this the whole chidakasha gita is about developing your viveka it's all about purifying the intellect of bhagwan nityananda he spoke about because when your buddhi is clear everything looks like what i am talking right now everything all these things become crystal clear to you then there is no confusion there is no doubts most of the wanderings and most of the confusions in life happen or blockages or you say no i am getting stuck and all it happens because there is no clarity almost all my readings that i do all the consultation personal consultation i do all have this problem there is no clarity because your buddhi is not developed so i teach awareness awareness directly cleanses your buddhi see that awareness shows you something you are using the instrument of intellect the awareness is pure consciousness that is which you are you don't have an awareness you are awareness but in the start stage we always say you are awareness no problem until you realize that you are that pure consciousness you are the pure awareness now when that awareness becomes aware of something it is a witness it's just an observer it cannot do anything it's just like shiva shiva tattva nirguna nirakara it has nothing to do with what you are doing the real shiva the real shiva the shiva with the guna will have the identity like the body the shiva that we worship that has gunas the one shiva that gets angry the one shiva that, you know anything that has got a certain reaction the way it reacts it is a guna that is still not the purest form so the tattva in that form is the formless it is nirguna no guna nirakara no form formless so until we go into that tattva we cannot see and when this pure consciousness pure awareness this nirguna nirakara which you are that spark is observing in pure awareness it, it becomes that pure awareness it is fully aware of everything around it no judgments like that tattva no judgments whatever you do it's a tatastu it's all fine neither right neither wrong everything is just observing but now when you are living in this body and in this human life and you need to take decisions to move around in this world you need to some tools to operate that pure consciousness so that awareness then uses this tool called intellect one step down it comes and then begins the karma kanda till then there is no karma no activity it is activity less activities begin from there because if we are living this world there is activity then we got to use but this is the right method of using the right tools understanding this who is that one who is functioning it's your pure consciousness pure consciousness does not function but the moment the intellect is refined and the pure consciousness starts seeing through the intellect now that intellect is the decision maker right wrong and all that stuff you know and from there you begin deciding so that clarity which the intellect has if it is purified then that consciousness can work very beautifully in this world and that discrimination that pure intellect will give you this clarity of there is nothing dual there is not separate and it will it will uh, you know uh, keep out the ego stuff the iness will not be there because it is completely operating on non partiality just like how you observe a movie in neutrality these this is these are my studies what i am researching and studying because i am a student of this path i am studying everything and going very deep and now i am contemplating on these subjects so and i am talking from experience because this might not be my 24 by 7 experience but there are stages where i 
peep into this i get glimpses of this and it's i can't mention how beautiful it is so these are trailers this is how life will show you some glimpses and trailers and then provoke you and provoke you and inspire you to not just be happy in the trailers go and see the whole movie become the movie itself that is where the path leads us so i'm not a guru guiding people no absolutely not i'm a student but i love sharing what i am seeing through things because it gives clarity to many who like me or have been through a journey and i've been through those phases where i can see people are uh, getting stuck or not understanding so to bring clarity into their lives to bring some meaning into their lives to some understanding so that they move ahead from there that is what i try to do that's my karma yoga my selfless service is that because karma yoga doesn't mean you go and give uh, food only or give money only karma yoga means in whatever way you can contribute to this collective consciousness you do that so that's what i said you can be all these yogis karma yogis gyana yogis raj yogis bhaktas everything all fine but a stage will come will come it will come where you have to transcend it if you do not transcend it it will poke your consciousness and that is where you feel stuck uh, nothing is happening this is not happening that is not happening i tried this i did this see there are people who tell me i did meditation for 7 years now i am feeling stuck so is it all wrong what i did i said no 7 years you mean to say you 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 have gained nothing in all this 7 years say no lot of things have happened see i can see things in clarity i have developed so much of love and the uh, rigidness has gone i was selfish before that has gone and you know i was tell lies that has so it has brought you changes right then what's your problem oh those days i was feeling you know there something is happening something is, but after 7 years nothing is happening now you know feeling stuck now you have that feeling but all these years you were enjoying it that means that path was working for you and working very fine for you and it has transformed you but now that stuckness is coming because that tools which had to give you that elevation has given you now there is something more that you need to contemplate in the same path only because every path has has the subtle aspect the higher aspect there is always to the lower and the higher like i talk about awareness i always talk about gross awareness because people are not yet ready for higher awareness even the practice a little bit what i have taught some experiences that we practice that we people have seen how beautiful in the lives they have seen their actual experiences you can see the comments that they put actually gone into that trance states and all that through gross awareness that just gross awareness what we are practicing what i am talking right now here is higher awareness you cannot directly go there until you get some glimpses of what this gross awareness can do to you so every aspect has got this higher and lower first you begin with the grossness and then you go into the subtle like i told you a parabhakti and parabhakti that bhakti is not complete until it that turns into parabhakti that is oneness ramakrishna paramahamsa's bhakti was a parabhakti in the start he saw kali outside it when it turned into parabhakti only he attained that state which he said is complete till then he used to say it's not complete there's something missing even at that high stage where he used to literally talk to the idol and feed it and all that even at that stages he said something is incomplete that was still in the dual aspect can you see the completion many examples we can give mira bai is one other she saw krishna krishna is outside as her husband and all that and it went on went on went on until a certain stage it got stuck and from there she had to go further the grace of that krishna consciousness made her realize that that krishna which she seek, seeking outside is nothing else than her itself her own consciousness is part of that and when she realized that aparabhakti turned into parabhakti and she merged into that krishna consciousness completion are you getting it so every path has its gross and subtle if you are getting stuck in any path remember this what is the subtle aspect in that path same path contemplate 
I am. I told you, I am not here to change anybody's paths. I am just giving clarity to this, and this is a common point that's happening everywhere in the world right now. It is not just with one path. Every that because the evolution is happening, the consciousness of the planet is rising so quickly. It's it's evolving beyond uh, the three D level. It's it's gone even the beyond the fourth dimension, four D levels. It's entering into the fifth dimensional state where there is. it's it's not all about non duality so if you don't want to make efforts about it mother nature will do it the universe will do it <laughs> that is why you can see an upheaval that's going on the confusion the frustration the helplessness the agony the misery the pain the suffering the turmoils the conflicts the contradictions and i'm telling you until you develop your buddhi you will get stuck in this The more your buddhi becomes clear, the more refined and more settled and peaceful you are. It's like you are you are looking at everything and you are understanding why people are stuck. Maybe you are not able to help. You are out of that stuckness. But I have seen that you know people can't understand because again they are not given this clear understanding step by step. If they slowly catch this, then they will look higher. So in your own path only there is something called subtle aspect. are you still stuck in the rigidity of the duality it's going to cause you immense trouble mark my words in the coming months and years you will see this this is not mine collective consciousness experience and my my readings my my own awareness in the gross form tell something but when i expand it into the collective <laughs> higher awareness it talks something else this is what the awareness sees i am not predicting anything and but this is what i can sense right now and i can even sense that this is going to get even worse if we do not let go of this dual consciousness the iness the separatedness if we do not embrace oneness no i believe in this rigidly there is nothing beyond mine okay go ahead you will see how it is going to be troublesome for you because that is not the ultimate truth we are not settling for the ultimate truth we are settling for our truth there is a difference your truth my truth and there is ultimate truth what is going to happen the ultimate truth because we are not the creators somebody else is running the whole thing we are we are just part of it so when i say i am the creator and i am going to create my world and the world around me problem that's the height of the iness it has gone too seriously into the head which is called maya consciousness the maya illusion so when it gets too much in the head yes we create our realities that's truth but we have limitations i always say that with your free will you have limitation it's your free will it's it's very very tiny my dear in this entire cosmic play you can't even fathom it even the god that we talk we we can't even fathom that and we go to become the creator of the universe <laughs> that's what the harm that you can do we create our little realities a little world okay fine and we create we enjoy it till the bhoga happens all the creation leads to bhoga only creation and the intensity to become a creator is that doer creator is a doer and doership comes when there are desires i want to achieve this i want this to happen i want that to happen i want to gain this i want to name uh, this name to come to me i want uh, the children in this format i want to get married i want to have possess so many things in life the riches the comfort this is all desires because their duality i am here there so we will try to gather things from outside thinking it is going to give us happiness my wife will give me my children will give me my parents will give me my servants will give me my subordinates will give me my followers will give me no followers can give you that <laughs> followers followers are like uh, if one thing changes everybody is gone <laughs> it can happen see i have seen in so many life instant instances where one controversy or something happens everybody afra tapri is gone and they look where are all these people gone i need your support where are they they are all gone so they are supportive till you are beneficial to them Till, till you provide what they what they want out of you, they are devoted to you. 
once you stop that you do that and see all aparatha pri all go so this is what the catches of that maya which is called the dualism so if we realize this we don't get attached to these things also and there will be no pride that you know i've got so many people with me <laughs> it's all funny anyways i say we are all of this we can have the audacity to be all of this karma yogi bhakta when that ego consciousness goes it's okay okay i have slid into this no i am this margi i am only a raj yogi apart from meditation nothing else is my path you cannot be because when you are uh, having the compassion even as a raj yogi when you are uh, when you become a very divine person and then you want to serve somebody even serve your father mother you become automatically a karma yogi <laughs> and then you uh, have some devotion to something you automatically become a bhakta bhakta without you even realizing so it is not about telling what i am you are part of all this you have to only realize oh i am everything actually i didn't realize this and i had this pride of you know i am only this marga only this is my marga nothing else is going to give everything will i'll gain through this yes fine you will get through one path you will get through one master everything is there but you will have to understand the higher tatvas in that otherwise you are stuck and only when you understand even the path of the guru disciple with all due respects it's 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 nothing to uh, it's not a sin to feel that you know the guru is me it it's, it's not saying i i have become the guru no the guru and me there's no difference because once you realize the consciousness is one when you say that oh me and this tree is one then where the heck is the problem of saying me and my guru is one is <laughs> saying that so when you realize that the distances go the dualities go the dependency on external form goes it's a natural process you don't do it by force you don't do it huh? oh no no i cannot no if you are linked you are attached you do that because if a person is lost very grossly in this maya world very strongly let's say you lot of attachment and lot of confusion lot of karmic stuff and everything and i can't find a pay path out i'm reading books i'm seeing tv i'm looking into videos i am listening to advices but nothing works you know i'm confused then please hold on to a guru a guru is a master who has walked the path in a certain way and knows how to lead you then you stick on devotedly to a master an external master only till you come to a situation when you can realize this and understand that you and the master are not different till then that is needed that is why all these paths are all these paths dissolve at one state they are needed at one state but when you evolve to a certain state they dissolve by itself you don't have to dissolve anything you don't have to push away anything so it's not about the mind doing it it's spontaneously happening naturally evolving i hope this video makes it very clear on what i am trying to say in all these videos crystal clear this is you can repeatedly listen to this again and again twice or thrice you will you will get very deep insights and we must understand that everything even karma will stop one day the karma if it is in the self let's see again i told you karma has two the gross and the subtle gross you begin with gross oh i want to it begins with the ego consciousness i get uh, satisfaction by serving people Uh, why you know i i get like i told you about the person who said i saved so many cats so many dogs and there is a pride there there is a goodness feeling that you know i did so much for everything i did so much for the people i fed thousands of people and uh, we even take pride in advertising it you know we have done so much we have done that's all okay that's go- gross karma yoga but there is a subtle karma yoga in that which is completely nishkam which will not advertise not look into anything it will just do it very selflessly and move on it will not even keep a memory track here as to i had done this that iness is not there i had done this that time when the karma yoga becomes very shreshta that very subtle that time the divine consciousness will tell you your intellect will tell you i am not doing this yoga this karma there is something that is doing through me i am just become an instrument 
that is the higher end higher consciousness of karma yoga path so one has to transcend to that level i told you everything has this lower and higher gross and subtle so once you go to that state that level everything is crystal clear to you and then you the doership goes see the whole point is that killing the doership the devotee also begins with doership i am the worshipper i am the disciple and that and then when you go higher the disciple merges with the guru there is no disciple there is no guru the doership is gone that i am worshiping i am following the master i am an obedient uh, disciple that i that even that obedience has got a pride you know i am a loyal disciple i am the um, a, what do you call that param shishya <laughs> is all the doership i am the greatest devotee i am the greatest disciple all that i had this all once you know that will dissolve that has to dissolve otherwise it's not evolution because somewhere you have to reach a state where all these ainas starts dissolving i don't say my ainas is completely gone but to large extent it has dissolved and i can contemplate that is where we contemplate when we do chintan this is what happens atma chintan this is what happens so karma also has to end somewhere that ainas has to go doership has to go it's all can you understand this whole video is all about how the doership dissolves in all the paths all the paths even in raj yoga there is first a meditator i got to do meditation i have to do sadhana it is my time right now i did not do it today i did it two months back i am doing 3 hours a day there is pride there is a certain ainas there so i become the doer of that meditation and the ultimate fact is that you cannot do meditation meditation must happen to you you can do sadhana you can do tapas because there is lot of doership in that the aham is very active when you do tapas the tapasvi always is the doer there because i take the things in my hand and i am now releasing i am healing myself that i is there there is a doer there now this also is a gross it has to rise into subtle there when you see spontaneity is there and then you see that you don't say i do my meditation you say i go into fall into meditation the falling happens i'm being meditative another level a little higher level then and i am being meditative falling into meditation still further higher that even that subtle i will go off and that meditation is happening to me karma is happening through me can you see this how beautiful it is that ainas goes on reduce even in raj yoga and that is the state when non dual consciousness if you see the great great non dual teachings like tattva bodha atma bodha all on these subjects you will see that you know it's, it's beautiful that that even that meditator why vanishes away and this the avdutas are the best example you look at them the the, the ainas also is there not there uh, they are always in that state who is the person who is in that state there is no person there that state itself is them non dual consciousness is them that godliness is them they don't have to go into a trance they are in that trance they have become that i am that i am they have become they have merged into that that i am ness so can you see beautifully how all the paths have these two aspects and how the whole goal is to reach the higher consciousness of every path and when you reach when can you reach that when the doership the i ness dissolves when the duality dissolves so i think this makes it more clear than telling the ego has to dissolve i have to kill the ego you don't run behind killing detachment attachment killing anger killing pride killing jealousy you say kill your jealousy you don't know where the source of that jealousy is it's coming from duality 
work on a duality slowly 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 it will start fading and go away it will not go overnight but it will go away kill the ego is a big problem in the siddha marga it's a big uh, problem actually because there a lot of doership is there like you know it's like uh, your ego i'll kill your ego you need to be taught lessons you know so that and there are very rigid uh, methods in the siddha marga you see it's very intense if you see uh, how if you go um, in the uh, yogis like uh, the agoras you know other nath uh, sampraday is very very strict they deal very strictly with the ego a little uh, their thrashing is given insults are done you know public humiliation is done to kill that ego it is such it is a crude method it's a method it's a direct method but it causes lot of harm also at the same time because if the ego is active and the ego is getting a thrashings it might not it might uh, create some other havoc so here there is duality again there is this ego person and there is a destroyer of ego from outside there is a I'll kill your ego wait how can the ego kill the ego <laughs> that also is ego is this oil kill your ego or i am getting affected you know what is that which is triggering you you got a lot of ego you know what is this in me that is saying you got a lot of ego it is my ego so it is one ego trying to kill <laughs> it's it's very catchy the most simplest way i have seen and experimented and see is go to the root of that the duality is the problem with your own atma chintan with your own awareness you can rise above this and work on your duality aspects that is why i keep working and posting a lot on non dualism if you catch that which is the root of all issues you will see that the ego ness the ignorance also starts to dissolve and let it go in its own don't be in a hurry the world will tell you no there is still ego that is their problem <laughs> because your ego is triggering somebody else else's it doesn't work don't be bothered about that you are aware that your ego is dissolving that's more than enough you don't have to become a saint enlightened being overnight let it take given a lifetime go very cautiously go in awareness work very clearly on the cautious uh, aspects of this so this were this video is all about destroying that not even destroying I, uh, that's a damaging word destroying is uh, it is dissolving the ego by becoming aware so developing more awareness will certainly help you my dear friends i'm telling you honestly i'm telling you it will help you and to go in a very nice way you it will you can even glide through life and when things are not right things will always be something or the other will always be there in life but you can go through it very neutrally when you have this high sense of awareness so develop your awareness that's very very important and these things have to end one day i was reading a beautiful uh, uh, non dualistic uh, document or a scripture called upadesha saram upadesha sara it was written by ramana maharishi in 30 verses and it was uh, the work of a devotee because there is there is actually in a, one of the puranas there is a story where a uh, lot of rishis were sitting householder rishis householder means uh, grahastha rishis with their wives they were sitting and doing karma kanda this is again about karma kanda see even the scriptures are talking about this karma kanda people get involved in karma ritual because all the rituals we need to understand is coming from a desire which is inspired by greed karma kanda i do a certain ritual to get the phala karma phala <laughs> karma kanda phala so you do a ritual like yagna yagna avan homa you do it when you do a homa you cannot say it is very selfless it is with a desire whatever even if you are telling it is for others there is a desire something which you are connected to that outcome of others so karma kanda when you are involved in any kind of ritual practices it's always give and take it's always a transaction i need something i do this i do this karma i get the phala karma phala i am there to reap the phala it is very uh, dualistic and it is very much got to do with the self 
satisfying desires from the divinity karma kanda has got its own benefits it will help you as a tool but that can not give you moksha i don't say this scriptures say this upadesha sara say this so this beautiful story is there where uh there are rishis the grahastha rishi is sitting with their wives and doing this karma kanda yagna homa havan and they are all lost in this uh, karma kanda so shiva realizes that they are lost they are not coming out of this they are stuck in the greed and me and minus duality so to teach them a certain things he calls up uh, vishnu uh, this is the puranic story and vishnu becomes a mohini as a female and uh, shiva comes as a uh, beggar uh, bikshu you know uh, a divine bikshu and they come there in that place and uh, the story is it goes on you can read this stuff and then what happens is this females the wives get enchanted by this bikshu because he is very handsome man he is a tatva of shiva and they are mesmerized and the rishis get mesmerized by this mohini who is a part of this vishnu and uh, they go behind that mohini because mohini runs that side and they they are so enchanted they leave all the karma kanda <laughs> see what is the show when you have this kind of greed towards self desiring self fulfillment even the rishis see with the examples what they are giving is that desire which what takes you into kama desire means kama kama is lust so that lust they take they run behind that uh, mohini and suddenly she disappears and they say where is she gone suddenly they realize oh my god this is some something extraordinary and they feel embarrassed and they come back when they come back they see their uh, better halves are not there they have also got enchanted they are also under the uh, influence of that kama so they have gone and they are very bewildered about what has happened here and then the story it goes on like you know the how they realize and how shiva makes them realize that there is no uh, ultimatum in this karma kanda so he comes there to ask them to give up this doership this doership of i am the doer of this karma and you know this is not going to take you anywhere you got stuck here so the upadesha sara is what i am contemplating on this time <laughs> and beautifully written by uh, ramana maharishi ji so you can contemplate on that maybe i'll talk on upadesha sara on some other time very beautiful very very beautiful it's completely advaita and completely focused on the self which again shiva has only given them go back into the self and what i am talking in this whole video what i am talking on this holy hill arunachala which is a tatva of shiva only the message is very clear focus on yourself contemplate on yourself reflect on yourself when you reflect on all that non duality aspects will increase in you duality will reduce with duality reducing all the sufferings and miseries that are connected to those dualities shall reduce with this divine message with lots of divine love and light i take your leave now may we all evolve be blessed